2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, again, uh, remember for the Anderson, remember the Andersons in prayer. Um, 2 Kings chapter 6 and beginning in verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning in verse 9, the Bible says, And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware, thou pass not such a place, for thither, thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he's in Dothan. Therefore sent the the sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more mighty than they that be with them. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your precious words. God, we know uh, truly from your word that those that are here this morning are by your appointment, and we praise you for that. God, uh, open your word unto us, cause us to gain a better understanding, Lord, and that most of all that you would be lifted up. We pray for the lost that be here among us. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture and uh, being able to look just for a moment at what's going on spiritually around us. Now, I fully believe that more times than not, we're so overwhelmed by what's going on in the flesh that we never, uh, never really get a glimpse spiritually. Now, if uh, we could look at things in terms as they're occurring spiritually, our peace would be greatly increased. You know, you talk to even the average Christian today, and all you find on them is distress and heartache and, and worry, and you wonder why that, and it's because they don't ever get a spiritual look. They never see they never see the situation in the context of the Bible or in the context of what the Almighty would look at it. They look at it from a flesh. Now, uh, I would to God just once in my life, and, and and no doubt I hope I see things in the context of the Scripture. But opening the spiritual eye, I'll say the only thing that I've ever seen truly opened up of the spiritual eye is my unworthy condition in Christ's sufficiency. That's the only two things I've ever really seen, I think, in, in right. what the uh, Bible is teaching here. Now, uh, when you get in these situations, uh, it's not going to be pleasant. Uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be a thing that you're going to enjoy because the fear of man is uh, is a very natural thing. All through the Bible, God's people, not not the enemies of God, but God's people, time and time again, are are taught that we are to be peaceful. We are not to be stressed. Uh, we are not to be a people that's overwhelmed by the situation. So back in verse 9, the Bible says, And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Now, isn't a wonderful thing is two miraculous things that happen here is that the man of God gives advice to the government, 
government and the government listens. That, that is not a thing that happens every day. That's a miraculous event. In fact, in the modern day, if there's a spiritual messenger come to God's people, the opposite will occur. If they say go left, they'll go right. And that is the natural state of man. That is who he is through and through. But we have a, a, apparently a spiritual leader because he listens to the advice of God's man. Uh, 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 a military leader that is interested in pleasing God. Uh, you know, very, very, very few people in the modern day are interested in pleasing God right. in all aspects of their life. Now, there may be one or two, but in the entirety of their life, uh, it is a rare thing for people to seek to please God. Now, uh, in, the, in verse 10, the Bible says, And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once or twice, nor twice. Now, uh, I want you to see that this obedience built the pattern. Uh, uh, Elijah would say, Don't go there. The enemy is in your way. And they wouldn't go there. And... Apparently he looked for advice again and, and, and Elijah was faithful and he gave the advice again and then he had the servant of God being obedient again. And it said it wasn't just one or two times so we know it's at least three times and when God's people please God that much it's going to stir up the world. Uh, the, the enemy of God got mad very quickly. Uh, in fact, he says, I've got a leak somewhere in here. Somebody is tipping off God's people. Uh, you know, uh, that's how the world looks at it very quickly, is it not? They never give the Lord God credit. They say, we've got to have a spy in the camp or something like that. And he says, there, there's something going on. And again, never, never considering how great and wonderful our God is. And so, uh, verse 11, Therefore the heart of the king of Assyria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said uh, unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, who is the cheat? Who is the traitor? Who is running and telling them what our plan is? And again, not even recognizing whom God is. Verse 12, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Now, you think about the miraculous work of God, and, and this wasn't just a song, it was the true thing. If he whispered to his wife, tomorrow we're going down in the valley of Samaria, by the next morning, God's man knew it. And God's man was delivering it on to the government. That was the situation. Can you imagine a relationship so close to God that you knew what was going on in the leader's chamber? Now, most people today would say that's an impossibility, but it is not. The Lord God has never changed. He's always been the same. What the problem is, there's not a man that that's, that's that close to the Lord. Yeah. That's the problem. It, it's not that it doesn't happen or it can't happen. I guess I should put it that way. Is we don't have the man to do it, myself included. That, that closeness really doesn't exist anymore. And even in that day, it was a rare thing. Uh, now, you'll see the response that God's... <laughs> that the enemy of God has, and I'm going to kill him. Now, and, and this just is a sign because I, I know Trump ain't no prince either. I understand what he's about. But wasn't it odd, the immediate moment that God's, uh, that Trump said, I'm going to run again, the next day the FBI was on him and opening another investigation. You know, the devil always has a plan. He's always going to return. He's always going to have a reaction uh, to God's people. Very same thing here uh, is I'm going to stop him. I'm going to shut Elijah down. Now, as things progress in our, in, in our years, listen, it's going to 
to be the effort of the government to shut God's people down. Right. Uh, that's what all your little tax numbers and your tax IDs and all the stuff we think we have to have for a church to exist, that's where it comes from, and that's how they'll keep up with us. And then, if you don't tell people sodomy is okay, well, we're running your tax number and you're done. The building's now ours. You see what I'm saying? That's how, uh, that's how to transpire. So we see if we're obedient unto God, God will bring us above that. He will give us deliverance that we've never even imagined about. He, he, he will provide things that, that we can't even that we can't even dream of. And so they went out to get God's man. Verse 13. And he said, Go spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And they said, and it was told him, Behold, he's in Dothan. Now apparently it wasn't no mystery, it wasn't no secret where God's man was at. Now uh, apparently this uh, Syrian king or Syrian military leader thought it was, but it was no secret where uh, Elijah had his base set up, and that, and that was down at Dothan. You know, we as God's people, we don't need to try to see, uh, uh, serve the Lord secretly, and I can't remember which one it was, uh, uh, toward the end of Christ's life, it, it wasn't um, uh, it wasn't Nicodemus, but it was somewhere along in there. It says that there was a man that was a disciple, but secretly, for he feared. Now that ought not to ever be us. We don't need to serve him secretly. We need to be open. We need to be forthright, and we need to preach. What the Lord, uh, what the Lord gives us, and so we find then in this uh, in this situation that God's man wasn't being secretive in any way, form, or fashion. Verse fourteen. Therefore sent he, meaning the Syrian leader. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compass the city about. Now, I don't really have, know how large Dothan was, but I certainly wasn't, I understand it was nowhere as big, nearly as big as Jerusalem. So he sent the majority of his host to this tiny town just to drag out God's man. See, the devil sometimes will send full force for you. Now, that's not popular preaching, but if you're doing something on behalf of the Lord, I mean, genuinely, you're preaching, you're teaching, you're, you're, your center is around the things of the Lord, then the devil's not going to like that. He's not going to enjoy it. He's not, he's not going to be uh, responding well to that. And, and so he'll, he'll send everything he's got after you. Remember, remember with Job, and uh, the Lord God said, "He considered my servant Job. There's none like him in the earth." And of course, the devil had a response, and he said, "I'll take away, I'll take away the hedge of protection. You can do whatever you want to to it, but just save his life." And, and, and so we see very similar situation. Uh, huh, the forces, the forces of. Huh, the forces of all the devil at that time uh, up against God's single man, man. Verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my, my master, how shall we do? Now, it's easy to get down. I don't know if this was Gehazi or exactly who this little servant was. And, and, you know, a lot of people give him great criticism. But, you know, without a spiritual eye, you would do the same thing. If you weren't looking at this horrible situation 
in the context of Scripture and in the context about what you know about the Almighty, you would be just like with this guy. There's no way out. There's nothing for us to do. It's about to be over. Remember when they were, they had a mountain on each side, the Red Sea in front of them, and, and Egypt on their back? You, and, and what the Lord God did was cause a darkness to come and, and just hit them. And then, and then he opened the sea. See, you're going to get into situations spiritually where there seems to be no way out. And that then is when you need to pray for spiritual vision. Again, I, I can't say that I've had it many times, but I did see myself as an ungodly Savior in desperate need of saving. That, that's one thing I've seen through a spiritual eye. And I've seen this. I've seen Jesus as the only answer. And, we, and when that occurred, he saved my soul. And, and so we find them in a very desperate situation and this poor new servant just screaming out, what are we going to do? Now, I will say this, when you think about this servant, he wasn't running. He was staying with his master. It, it would be the impulse of the flesh to run, leave the old man by his side, and, and, and go and leave and bring your own safety. But he needed a spiritual eye. Verse... Uh, 16, and he, meaning Elijah, and he, and, and uh, Elisha, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eye, eyes of the young man, and he and saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blind, uh, and he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Now I want you to see the, that God takes these uh, shields off the say, the the. <clears throat> eyes of the servant. Remember after the Lord saved Paul and he, his vision was gone? Well, it was really never the same. But it was for, he was blind three days. Uh, you ever thought that the purpose behind that is he quit seeing the world for a little while? That, that he'd be wholly focused on Christ? Um, well, we need that. We, we need some periods in our life where our eyes simply don't rest on what's going on on CNN or, or any of the other news networks, that what we look on is Christ. What, when when a, a tragic thing happens, look at, it, look at it in the context of the Scripture. And it, it will be a great enlightening experience. So we find here uh, Elijah, uh, excuse me, Elisha, already knew the situation and he wanted that, that servant to see it in a spiritual context. And, th and that ought to be the desire of any pastor when tragedy strikes or just reading uh, what appears to be a simple verse in the, uh, in the scripture that the pastor's desire is for his people to see it. And the Lord answered Elisha's <laughs> request and the man was encouraged. Now, the reality is this. They were there the whole time. Elisha saw them. They were both in the same situation and in the same circumstance. And again, I'm assuming this person is Gehazi. And Gehazi they ended up being a turncoat. And that's I understand what happened late, later. But it was there the whole time. And, they didn't, and he didn't see it. Now, was Gehazi saved? I don't know. He, he had some times in his life where he certainly didn't look like it. I'll put it that way. But I do know this. Whatever his spiritual condition was at that time, it was hindering his spiritual vision. And many, many times it's the very same thing with us. 
uh, our spiritual condition clouds our view of the circumstance we're in. You know why, and you don't seem to understand it, but the older I get, I think the more I do understand it, you preach and preach and preach and preach, and it seems like people are just zoned out. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> their eyes are blinded. Uh, the redeemed, they can have their eyes blinded. And it, just because you're saved don't mean that you see everything in a spiritual context. And, and so we as the Lord's people... We need to be very acutely aware of that when trouble comes. When uh, it's your inclination to drift from the truth. And listen, listen church, our young people are leaving by droves and going after other things. You know why? They're spiritually blinded. They don't see what that other group has in store for them. And so we as the Lord's people, we certainly ought to do, before we do anything, but especially before we make big decisions, we certainly need to look with a spiritual eye, to look that sure of certainty that this is, in fact, the will of God. And when we do that, the Lord will bless us every time. Verse 18, and when they came down to him. Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite the people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now, you remember the great, wonderful host they had and the simple request of Elisha. Just blind them. Blind them for a little while so that they can't find us. And you ever thought about all that force that was around them, if Elisha had got in the flesh, he would have said, take every one of them. And you know what? I believe the Lord God would have done it. But because he was a spiritual man, he didn't want them to die like that. He said, just smoke them with blindness. Give, give us a means of escape. Uh, take the enemy away from us. But that, that's a man that really has a spiritual understanding. That's a man that can see and say and, and understand assuredly and know that that's certainly not the best thing to do. And, and so we find then, you think about the circumstances in your life, and uh, I don't, sometimes I don't even know about mine, but uh, I certainly had periods in my life where I knew I could have made lot, a lot better decision than I did make. And, and, and most of the time, it was because I wasn't looking. I wasn't, you know, you look out now, the, the leaves are gone. It's cold at night. Here lately, it's even been cold in the day. The frost is uh, thick. And you're like, well, we're getting into late fall and early winter. And you know why you know that? Because you look around, you feel, you understand the situation. Why can't we do that spiritually? And the reason why, I'll tell you, is a stinking ungodly flesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that, that is your issue. It's my issue. Everyone under the sound of my voice, that is your hindrance. And so, would to God at times, the Lord God would, would, in His goodness, would open our eyes to the same situation. Now, go with me, if you will, <clears throat> uh, to, Re to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12. Uh, the, le the church letters, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write these things, saith he, which have the sharp, the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. Thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. And in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Now that's, that's a very troubling an exciting verse at the same time. Uh, can you imagine the Lord Almighty of heaven sending a letter to New Testament and saying, 
I, want, I, I know where Satan's seat is. Now you look uh, uh, around the little building this morning and of assuredly Satan or one of his imps are here even this morning. You ever th thought why a sermon don't ring clear? Well, I'll give you the two possibilities. Number one, it's not biblical. And number two is that Satan is giving a hindrance. Those are the two. Um, it, there are no other. Now, we could paint a lot of different pictures on it and, and uh, kind of claim lack of study and lack of sleep and all that we, we draw on in that. But the real thing is, is the spiritual eye is closed. Now, we say that, oh, I want to see things in a spiritual sense. Well, I do too, but be sure you mean it. Because listen, you're not only going to see, uh, according to this text, you're not going to see just the, the, the angels of God and them, and them shoring you up. You might see Satan or one of his imps too. That's a, that's a pretty bitter pill to swallow, isn't it? You're looking through spiritual eyes. So the next time you're having difficulty in study, the next time you're having a challenge and getting in that book by yourself and studying the things of God, remember uh, the hindrance is very real. It, it, the, the hindrance is of a spiritual nature, not of a carnal nature. And uh, you think this morning if the, if the scales fell off this morning, what this building might be full with. Because you know what? He's not going to take time, and when I said he, I mean Satan, He's not going to take time with false churches because he's got them where he wants them. Right. What he's going to take time for is churches that, in spite of conditions, are still standing for the truth. In, in spite of, of the world seemingly falling away around us, that he, they are still being faithful. Notice even in the text we read, uh, Athos, my faithful mark. You know what? Atticus didn't get out, did he? He didn't escape. The end came. Because of his stand, he died. That's what a martyr is. You know what? Uh, you ever thought about what we might think about that? Would, would we be the ones to say, man, Antipas, he did it. He held out to the very end. Or would we think, well, you know, Antipas got in some trouble, didn't he? What would be our vision, our context? We couldn't see anything else. We'd just see Antipas dying. What would be our take on that? Well, how would we look at that? You ever seen, you know, the sad truth is today, more and more and more of our kind of churches are closing and never meeting again. How do we take that? How do we perceive that? Do we see Satan getting victory? Do we, uh, do we see a people that's, that's giving up? How, how, do you, how do you perceive that in spiritual context? And, and certainly, and you can read the rest of this letter. I won't, I won't uh, finish it out for you because y'all are all good readers. But despite what was going on, and despite what the Lord said about this church, he begins to say there are some issues. There are some problems. Now, they had, they had a man that died and they had Satan sitting in the church and was apparently doing pretty well against him, but he says, I have some things with you. Now, that, that's an amazing thing. So I guess the end, the end of this is this. Do you really want a spiritual vision? Oh, yeah, yeah, Brother Larry, I want to see it. Well, just be certain you do, because the full picture not, might not be what you think it is. Last place, Gospel of Matthew. Matthew uh, chapter 18. Matthew 18 and verse 20. Again, the Lord Jesus uh, speaking. But where two or three are gathered in my name, 
There I'm in the midst of them. Now, sometimes we think we've got to have several people here and we get down and out when you know, everything don't happen just right. But when we're really meeting in the name of Christ, I mean, not coming because it's Wednesday night and not coming because it's the Lord's day, but coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I'll be there. I promise you, I'll be there. And a lot of times we don't take it as that, do we? You know what? Uh, you know, our God is faithful. I, I've never known him to lie about one thing. Have you? So why would he possibly lie about that statement? Now, the only conclusion, because we've all been to those churches where it's dry as sandpaper, and you're like, when is this mess going to be over with? When are we going to be able to get out of here? When are we going to be able to get to the food downstairs? Right? Well, the only thing I can come to is this. We didn't come in this night. Matthew's telling me a story about that elk he shot. And uh, he said they was, they was trapping it couldn't find it. And him and his buddy, he says, he says to Matthew, we need to pray about this. They took, and remember there was two of them, Matthew and his friend. And they prayed about it. And Matthew turned around and there it was. And he said, well, Dad, I guess I just missed it going up here. I don't know, Matthew, maybe it wasn't there. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? God is faithful to that sincerity. It don't have to be in a building like this. It don't have to be. Uh, it can be worth two or three. It is a wonderful thing. It only takes two. We need to claim that for what it is. I want to see things in a spiritual sense. You know, as, as we approach another presidential election, I want to see things in a spiritual sense, don't you? I don't know that, honestly, I don't know if Trump, Trump is any better than, than the one we have now. But I'd like to view it in a spiritual sense, wouldn't you? I'd like, I'd like to find at least a man that I could vote for and feel good about. Look at it in a spiritual sense. We're paying, you know, everybody's excited that gas is down $3 to $3 a gallon. Look at it in a spiritual sense. <laughs> two ways you can look at that. Number one, two years ago, it was a buck and a half a gallon, right? And you can also look at it this. You know why it's $3 a gallon? Because the Almighty wants it to be $3 a gallon. Which spiritual eye are you going to take? That is where we should be. 